Hi everybody. In our previous video linked in the description, we looked at the body animation workflow for the metahumans in my fellowship film. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the facial animation techniques that were used. Uh, and this was uh, facial performance capture. And we're going to take a look at a different shot this time. This is the boss character because a lot more work went into uh, the boss character's face due to the use of a lot of close-ups and he had a lot of dialogue. So the first thing to point out is that the facial capture was driven by a performance from Alex Lindsay. Now Alex has access to all kinds of video equipment and what he did is he had a Ursa 12K on hand at the time. And we did a little Zoom meeting with that and so I was able to direct him and he recorded an Ultra HD clip at 240 frames a second. So this is now being played back at 30 frames a second, so one-eighth speed. So we get the slow motion of his performance. So we have a MOV file from the Ursa. And the interesting thing is that the MOV file is actually encoded at 30 frames a second. So any video software that opens this MOV plays it back at 30 frames a second, even though it was recorded at 240 frames a second. So we get this kind of extreme slow motion effect. And so as he delivers his lines, we get a really detailed uh, sampling of his performance as he uh, does his dialogue. So with that, I uh, basically exported a cropped version of that. So I cropped it vertically to really maximize his face in view and also um, cropped it to HD. So this is an HD window. It's one to one pixels from the Ultra HD and it just worked out that his face fit really well in an HD video uh, cropped vertically for Faceware Studio. So this is Faceware Studio. It's loaded the MP4 version that I cropped down to uh, vertical HD and we're playing that at 30 frames a second. So as this plays the performance is being converted to 3D um, and really it's being converted into controls that are then streamed into Unreal Engine for driving the metahuman. And so this is one way that you know, we got a really detailed performance from Alex that then was uh, sent over to Unreal Engine to drive the metahuman face. Now I do have an another tutorial on my channel. I'll link it in the description that shows how to set up faceware to stream to a metahuman. And there's nothing special being done there. It's, it's exactly the same as in the tutorial to get all of this data streaming over to Unreal Engine. What I will note is that I actually just set up a separate Unreal Engine project. So I didn't capture in my uh, production project. Instead, I just had a separate project. It had a single metahuman, no other scenery in the level. And I just used that to um, operate take recorder and do takes of all of my metahumans. So if I was performing live with a webcam for a character or if I had some other video from one of the voice performers, that all went. Uh, through that other Unreal project and Take Recorder would be used to record just the head and face of, of that metahuman. And then those animation sequences that resulted, I could migrate them over here to my production project. So I, I gathered those in a face anim folder and here I've got boss face. And so if we look at this particular shot, you know, the dialogue is like, well, then, and a few other lines. And so this folder has the animation. So here's where another note comes into play. Uh, this animation, uh, when an animation sequence is recorded by Take Recorder off of a metahuman, and it doesn't matter if that is being driven by a sequence, if it's being driven by Live Link or uh, Faceware Studio, you end up recording about almost 1,200 different curves because that's all of the data that is in the object, the, the component that is actually the metahuman head and face. Most of this data is not necessary. So I uh, broke this up. I deleted all of the unnecessary curves, right? So some of those are just because they're procedural, right? If I type in LOD here in my filter, there are um, many, many, many curves here that are actually procedurally created uh, during the take 
to uh, drive different levels of detail of the mesh and, and they're not necessary for the performance. So these could all be deleted. Uh, there's also a set of curves that are related to the wrinkle maps, which again are procedurally driven from other data. So all of those um, I usually delete out. And then what's left is usually around 300 or so curves. I actually can't remember. I think 300 curves, but even that includes some things that, you know, there's no data in them. They're all values of zero. So I usually like to clean all of that out of my main animations and then further break up the animations into separate animation sequences per facial zone. So as an example, if we just look at the eyebrows, to make this well then brow, I duplicated the main animation sequence and then went in and deleted everything that wasn't related to the eyebrows, that, uh, that didn't have data, that was procedural, etc. And so now this animation sequence is just eight curves and it's just the eyebrows. And I'm gonna stack this animation sequence in the animation sequencer with other animation sequences for other areas of the face and I have the weighting setting in the animation uh, in the sequencer that I can attenuate this with so what I also did is I really exaggerated the data in this uh, sequence I don't know if that's hundred percent necessary but it's how I did it so what you'll see is the you know the eyebrows are really moving around here and of course it's all slow motion because again it was recorded at 1 8 speed so if we were to look at the data here, let's just take um, a couple of, here, just the, this one. I mean, they're, they're pretty similar. They are uh, asymmetrical. They're, they're, the data is not absolutely identical across left and right. You can see that here in particular, um, but they are pretty similar. So I'm just gonna right click and edit just that one curve. And so you can see that the data, the peaks of this data aren't limited from zero to one, but instead they're actually, in this case, getting as high as a little bit over eight and nine. And that's because all of the original raw data that went from zero to one was multiplied by 10. So uh, why did I do that? And what it did is give me a little more floating point headroom to attenuate this data and tune it in the sequence editor. And so I repeated this process for each region of the face. So there's eyebrows, there's eyes, which is mainly the blinking, there's the head motion itself was recorded in there, uh, the jaw motion, the mouth, neck, and nose. So a separate sequence for each of these looks like you know, seven different animation sequences. So over in the sequencer, if we expand on the boss's track and we can ignore the body, um, you'll see here that in the animation section, I actually have all seven of these animations loaded in and the weighting value you know of course point 0.1 is pretty common I mean that should neutralize essentially that multiply by 10 and then others I changed a little bit more so it looks like you know the eyes for example I landed on 0.05 so you know less a little less dramatic in the eye motion uh, same thing with the jaw so um, this gives me that flexibility to kind of dial in if I wanted more exaggerated uh, for example eyebrow motion I could make this a 0.2 instead and, and make the eyebrows more exaggerated so when all of these are stacked together in the sequencer with the various weighting settings then I've kind of we'll tuned in first. the performance that I was interested in uh, you'll see some gaps in here and the reason for that is that I didn't really need the data for the eyes during this kind of hold in between lines you know there's this dramatic pause and um, I wasn't sure how long I'd stay on this face. You can see I've animated the camera as well, so the, the camera is pushing in on the character as he's you know, reciting his line. Um, so there, there might have been some spikes in the data or noise that um, I really didn't need in this kind of dramatic hold, and so I just deleted the animation in that area. It's really easy to do. Um, I can you know, just move the playhead to a part of the sequence, uh, right click and go to edit and choose split. And so at that point, um, if I go ahead and do that split. Okay, now I've got a separate piece. So if this all was one animation sequence and um, you know I could delete any one of these pieces that I've split off if I wanted to and that gets rid of them from the influence. Now, of course, remember these animation sequences are one eighth speed. 
uh, because they were recorded in slow motion. And so every one of these, if I right click on it under properties, you'll see that I have play rate set to eight and that brings them back up to real time. So now I've got all of that data from the 240 frames a second is in here, um, but it's playing back at eight times that speed, so I get my uh, sequence at 30 frames a second. And so I've got all of that. And finally, uh, I, you know, there were some tweaks I wanted to do to this performance. And so, you know, in here you can see these are the keyframes. And ultimately what I ended up doing here is, you know, again, for face, just like body, you can right click on face, bake to control rig, bake to face control board. So doing that when it was just animations, essentially baked all of this animation onto the face control board rig. So let me disconnect our camera here and I can get a little wider view and so there's the whole control rig for the face and then I have access to that to edit um, I can you know edit keyframes and curves in here right so if I wanted to and one of the things you can see I did is I you know collapsed it all together and during this dramatic pause basically deleted all the keyframes right just you know click and drag select and uh, hit delete and that would delete all the keyframes that are selected in the entire control rig and then I added a few manual keyframes to adjust the expression and make sure that it, it kind of changed over time so we didn't go dead right so it's trying to kind of expand on the uh, that little smirky grin he's got right and so you could see uh, left mouth sharp corner pull so this pull right here is actually a few keyframes and if I click on here I can use the curve editor to kind of really take a look at that and so you could see there's data in here that you know basically it was not um, doing much of a sharp corner pull itself um, but then I added some keyframes to like really draw that uh, mouth corner over so I can also use this to enhance the diction um, I didn't do that in this case it could be a combination of running out of time versus you know the facial capture actually did did pretty well but I did notice when I was getting ready for this little tutorial that you know the, the word you here he, he says you and his face doesn't really funnel or pucker quite well so you know play it back and then you after right so when he says you we get Alex's kind of really good jaw side to side motion and all but we don't ha really don't have a pucker we don't have a, a funnel in the face so I could add that in um, using the facial control rig so if I filter here by let's say uh, funnel so f-u-n-n -N is my filter and then here are the controls for uh, the funnel and you know you could see that there is a value here um, there's a couple different ways that I can edit this um, one is that uh, I could just get all of these right so this is the right mouth uh, this is the upper and this is down and this is down and this is upper on the left side so I this is all the data that should be visible for all of those so you know for the word you which is marked here in, in there I can see it so I could select these right here there's the peak for you and I could just multiply it all if I want to raise it up it's 0.2 now maybe I want to get to 0.8 so I'll multiply that by 4 so I've selected all these keyframes and star equals 4 and that's going to basically multiply all the keyframes by 4 boom and there it is and now we've got nice little funnel face going on there so let's take a look at that then you have to all right so there we go we've improved that diction a little bit and so this can be done on a curve by curve basis so that's really the summary of uh, the approach that I used for facial capture with facial studio um, really lucked out with Alex being able to do this facial capture at the 240 frames a second all my other uh, facial performances were just done with webcams at uh, 30 frames a second uh, but I thought it would be interesting to see that and hopefully this will be of use in your own work. So uh, feel free to use the comments to ask questions, anything about the fellowship, about this particular project, about these metahumans. Go ahead and post questions in the comments. I'll uh, look to making some future videos to address those. So until next time, have fun.